So the question we're going to answer right now is how do you take reactions that might occur on a member and if necessary, sometimes you'll have to rotate those reactions so that the uh, coordinate axes that kind of best align with those reactions line up with uh, one of the members that you've got. One of the reasons that's important is uh, we have some formulas that deal with things like flexural stress or torsional stress. Well, those equations work best if you have a coordinate system that's actually aligned with, let's say, an axis of one of your members. And they don't work so well if you don't have forces and moments uh, reacting on your member that don't align with those axes. And so sometimes one of the you know, necessary and important steps to take is to align the uh, reactions that you actually have calculated at first to a coordinate system that's aligned with the, uh, the actual member. So that's the question up there. How do you transform the forces and moments here to apply to the member so that they align with an axis of the member? Okay. So let me do this by starting with the easy one, all right? What I'm representing there is that that member lies in the XY plane that's shown there on the screen, okay? And so that represents what kind of a rotation? Like, do we know what axis that rotated around to get from, let's say, XY, something in the, you know, along the X or along the Y, what axis did it have to rotate around to get to the actual orientation of the member? the z-axis, right? So it, you can actually think of there being a new set of axes here, and I'm going to define them like this where I show a new uh, axis, so let me make that blue. I'm going to make a new axis right here that I'll call y prime, and I'll make another new axis down here, right, that I'll call x prime. And what I'm kind of doing there is I'm making it to where the y prime axis uh, aligns with the axis of the member, and the x prime axis now is perpendicular. All right, well, that's, you know, often one of the things that you need to do, like I said, to, to kind of line up the uh, forces and moments with the orientation of the member so you can then figure out stresses, okay? Um, well, let's actually draw that. Well, actually, I, I come back to I don't think I finished the thought of which dimension, which direction is the easiest to deal with in that rotation. There's one that's really easy to deal with, Z, right? Because we didn't change anything in, with respect to the Z. We rotated around the Z, but we can say very quickly here that, uh, you know, if, if I go to kind of imagine there being a Z prime axis as well, that Z prime axis is coincident with the Z axis, right? Those two axes are along the same direction. And so that's the easy part, right, is that FZ prime is going to be equal to FZ, right? And MZ prime is going to be equal to MZ, okay? So this is the easy part. All right, the harder part is in the XY plane, right? So let's actually focus in on that XY plane and, and look at that member and some of the forces acting on that member. Um, so I'm going to draw that down here, and I'm going to separate the question of the moments from the question of the forces. And so let me actually start by dealing with the question of the forces. In the XY plane, I basically have this, right? This is X, this is Y. And what forces do I have on that member in the XY plane that were given? Okay. FX and FY, right? So this is where they start. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to actually make them a little different lengths, too. Let me do this. I'm going to, I'm going to show this one a little bit longer, FX. And this one I'll show a little bit shorter. Call that FY. Just to kind of, I think it'll make it a little more clear. Okay, so here's what we got to do if we're thinking about a rotation here. First of all, we have to define the angle of that rotation, right? So let me, let me call that on the original figure. I'll just call that theta. And I'm going to make that a rotation from the original y-axis to the y-prime axis, or you could kind of think of it also from the original x-axis to the x-prime axis, All right? And so that would be here as well. All right? And that means that I can also show my, my coordinate system on there as well. I can show my y-prime here. <clears throat> 
and I can show a x prime. Okay, so here's the basic idea of what we got to do to transform these two forces, right? What I have to do is um, I got to think about projecting my forces from where they sit right now onto these two axes, okay? So for instance, if I project Fx onto my x prime axis, what that looks like is dropping a line that's perpendicular to the x prime axis, right, and showing that my um, contribution of fx to my x prime direction is going to be this little length right here. Okay, so that's the contribution of fx to my uh, force along the x prime axis. All right. Um, is that the only contribution? It is not, right? Because I've got this other force, Fy, and that force uh, also has to be considered. So I've got to think about dropping that on there. And so if you look at this, um, along the x prime axis, I have the contribution of Fx, and then the contribution of Fy kind of acts in the opposite direction there. Okay, so what would I say my fx prime is going to be? Okay, well, let's get the, I guess we'll get the angle explicitly written in there. This is an angle of theta right here. And so the little contribution that I have um, pointing in the positive x prime comes from the fx. And so I'll put that fx, right, cosine of theta. But I also have to consider that Fy, and the angle for theta there is actually, you can think of it as being that angle up in the top of that triangle right there, right? This right here would be theta, okay? And because of that, I would have to actually subtract um, Fy times the sine of theta. Okay, and that would be the resultant of those two uh, contributions, the Fx and the Fy, along the x prime direction. Okay, can I do that for the, um, the y direction as well, the y prime direction? Okay, yeah, I can. What I got to do there is the same thing. I have to think about projecting Fx onto that axis and projecting Fy onto that axis. Do those add or subtract? Those two add, and so you would end up having to have uh, Fx, right? To get that vertical component, I guess, what would you have to do? Take the sine of theta and add Fy times the cosine of theta, okay? Let me show you something here real quick because this is, this is for forces, all right? Um, and that's, I think, fairly easy to, to understand. Let's look at the moments here real quick because I want to give you another way to think about these moments, okay? We already dealt with mz prime, but we've been used to showing these moments as these little sort of curly things around the axis, right? And that's one way that we can represent a particular rotational effect that's going on on a particular member. But another way that we can do that is basically using the same type of notation as we just did here. So let me copy that, put it here. Only now, we're, instead of talking about forces, we can see these as being moment vectors, okay? Like I can call that um, mx, right? That's now the moment that's being applied around the x-axis. And then this up here would be uh, my, that's the moment applied around the y-axis, okay? And uh, one of the things that you'll see in some texts is if they're talking about moment vectors as opposed to force vectors, just to have a different notation that they can use, uh, they might put a double-headed vector, right? So they might put another, another head on those two vectors to just be clear that you're talking about a moment, 
all right? But as far as how you deal with those vectors, it's no different than how you dealt with the force vectors, okay? The only thing you just gotta keep in mind is that a, ve a vector pointing along an X coordinate is a rotational effect around the X, and it works according to the right-hand rule, right? So if you have a, a vector pointing the direction I'm showing MX up there, what you do is you take your thumb and you point it the same direction as the arrowheads, a thumb of your right hand point it the same direction as your arrowheads. The direction that means there's a rotational effect is the direction that your right fingers curl, right? And that's what that vector represents is a, a twisting action in the direction of your fingers of your right hand if you point your right thumb along that positive arrow direction. Make sense? But after that, it's really the same, right? We just take uh, M, uh, x prime, mx prime is just going to be equal to mx times the cosine of theta minus my times the sine of theta, right? And my prime is going to be equal to my, excuse me, mx, I was going to do these the same order, mx times uh, the sine of theta plus my times the cosine of theta. And now we have used mx and my to transform uh, into mx prime and my prime aligned along those new axes. Okay. Um, let me show you this too because, you know, this is, I think, a handy thing, but one of the things that, that uh, we're not going to use this a whole lot in this course, but we, there, are a, there is another way that you can represent a rotation like this for vectors, and I want to show it to you. It's using vector and matrix notation, okay? So one of the ways I can represent this same exact thing I just wrote here is with um, fx prime uh, and fy prime. This is going to be equal to the, uh, the matrix I'm talking about for these uh, equations right down here, this is going to be equal to the matrix of cosine theta minus sine theta, sine theta, right, and cosine theta. All of this multiplied by my original vector of fx, fy. Right? So that little... Uh, matrix that I put right there is sometimes thought of as a rotation matrix that you can use to apply to one vector to rotate that vector into a new coordinate system where the, the angle that you use theta there is just the angle between the old and the new coordinate system. Okay? And that's basically what I wanted to touch on today.